Hey everyone, October is finally behind us and I'm not really sure if I'm really happy about that or if I want to go back and do it all again. I really wanted too much for myself this year and by October it just all exploded and that's when I put up the brand about wanting too much and what's going on in my mind and you are the best. First of all for letting me vent, for accepting and supporting and saying that I'm not alone in this and giving me the advice to relax, which was the advice that I've got from most of you and I've been trying to do that to just slow down a little bit and not expect too much from myself and so far it's Okay, but now let's have a look at what I actually managed to do in October. I uploaded my reading history and the Creatures of the Night tag and I also uploaded a sort of tag game because there are so many new booktubers and so many old tags and everybody feels the need to be tagged. So I put up a video where I tag everyone who watches those tags. So if you want to do a tag you don't know what, maybe check out that video and have fun with it and let me know. In October it was also time for another challenges check to see how I'm doing with all the goals I set myself at the beginning of the year and my reading goals and everything else. And I really feel the pressure by now about all these goals. I'm not too bothered if I don't reach them, but I'm not sure if I want to do that again next year. When I came back from my holiday, I uploaded a book haul and I also received packages this month. We had two discussions on my channel this month, the one about reading diverse and critical, where I'm basically confused why all of a sudden we demand it from others, where it started off something that we want to better ourselves. So I don't really get that. Everybody can read what they want and review it how they want it to. And everybody can choose who to watch. That's my opinion and most of yours opinion as well. So I love that. Also, we talked about ebooks where I said ebooks don't exist because I keep forgetting about them. And also I read this article which said that you remember stuff that you read on an ebook or digital format less than when you read it in paper format. And the discussion is very amazing. A lot of you said that it depends how much you use your e-reader. So people who really use them very organized and very often don't have that problem, or at least they don't seem to have that problem. Whereas others who prefer physical books say, yeah, this happens to me a lot too. So I guess it's probably more of a shifting thing for us that what we use most we remember better. I don't know. Interesting discussion. Thank you very much. Now let's get to the things I read in October. I finished Lamb by Christopher Moore, which is the story of Jesus Christ and basically told from the perspective of his best friend. And it's covering a lot of the years that we never hear about. So it's very imaginative, very creative. It is researched, but it's not claiming to be the truth story or whatever. I really appreciated the writing in this novel because it wasn't trying to imitate gospel writing, but it was written in normal English and modern English. So it was very easy to get into the language and you really start to like the narrator. I have a full review up of this book if you want to know more of my thoughts. Then I read The Sea by John Banville, which I love. The writing is beautiful, the story is beautiful, it really made you think. This book is about love and loss. We have this man who lost his wife and he's rather old now and so he spent a lot of his life with her and he remembers this life and he also remembers his first love and where he spent the holidays where he met her and remembers that and the narration flips and moves between all those different times that he's in and his different story parts. It is amazing, just go and read it. I finished listening to The Mangle Street Murders, which is a murder mystery that is set in Victorian London. And I really enjoyed the story, mainly due to the narration. The mystery was not that entertaining, but the narrator is a female narrator and she tells everything from her perspective. And most of the book, she comes over as very smart, very feminist and f very witty. But unfortunately, towards the end, she didn't solve the crime. And that was something that disturbed me. The rest was okay. It's not a super mystery novel that you must read, but it is a fun read. And the audiobook was very well done. I also read two short stories. One was about Alessandro Terabotti. He is the father of Alexia Terabotti. So of course, we're back in the parasol protectorate world with the vampires and the all the creatures and he's a preternatural and we have an adventure that he has in Egypt. It was really nice and a nice adding to the story and I hope she writes more about him and his character. And the other short story I read was the first short story she wrote and it's, I don't know how to describe it, it's sort of a historic fiction thing about the Romans invading something that I forgot what it's called. That's what you get when you read ebooks and you can't even look it up quickly. 
Anyways, those two short stories were very well written, as I do like Gail Carriger's style of writing, and I can recommend them. They were very short, very easy reads, and I read them to pass some time. At the moment, I'm reading Retribution Falls, and I'm halfway through. I really enjoy the book, but I don't have that much time to read, which is stressful, because I really want to know what's going to happen next. On audiobook, I'm currently listening to a book by David Sedaris, and I really have to say I expected a different voice. His voice took a little bit of getting used to because I imagined some different voice in my head before. But the story or the book is stories of his life again. There are some are funnier, some are less funny. There was one where he talked about how we learn German or other languages using Pimsleur, which I thought hilarious. First of all, because I've been using Pimsleur lately to try and learn Spanish a little bit, rather failing on that one but also because he talked about how we learn German and his experiences there and it was just hilarious. Other chapters are not as hilarious, but it's like as usual with his books. Some uh, chapters are more interesting, others are rather more boring. And I think if you like David Sedaris, you just want to know everything about his life by now. So just check it out. And the other work is well done. There are some chapters where he read life to an audience. Those are a lot more interesting because you get people who laugh with you. Yeah, and that makes it more fun somehow. That was basically my October. It was a lot of ups and downs. At the moment I'm doing NaNoWriMo, so if you want to add me as a writing buddy, just do that. I'm Annie Weeps there. And I also joined Twitter in October and I'm at Annie Weeps. You can follow me there and I'll still figure out how that works, but it's fun. You were all right. It's fun to be on Twitter. Thank you all for watching and let me know how your October was or comment on anything you want. Bye-bye.